morning, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Technology Committee, uh, I'd like to welcome you to Chartered Accountants House and to the 2019 CII Forum. Uh, our theme this year is the accounting evolution, where to from here. So we'll be exploring the next steps that you can take as professionals to ensure that you keep up to date and relevant and that you continue to bring value to your firms and companies. Uh, we hope you enjoy the conference and that you take away some useful information which will help you personally and professionally. Uh, my name is Michael Tinney, I'll be your chairperson today. Um, I'm the finance manager at FBD Insurance. I qualified uh, under what was at the time called the Elevation Program, but before that I was a software developer, so uh, I have a bit of an interest in the field. Uh, before we kick off, a uh, couple of house rules, the emergency exits, uh, through the doors behind me and up the stairs to the ground floor. Um, please make sure to bring your coats and your belongings as well when you leave uh, at lunchtime. Um, can I ask everybody to put your phones on silent, but don't turn them off. Uh, please do connect to the Wi-Fi. The name of the network is Chartered Accountants Guest, and the username and password is uh, CFD in lowercase. Um, once you get your Wi-Fi working, uh, head over to www.sli.do, Slido, uh, and enter the code hashtag F363. We're going to have a live poll. We're going to have three questions. Uh, in, uh, in a little while and you can give us some live feedback on the event. Uh, so that was Chartered Accountants Guest, CFD, CFD in lowercase. Um, on behalf of the Technology Committee, I'd also, uh, I'd like to thank firstly Karen and Neil uh, at the CAI. They did a lot of work uh, helping us plan and organize this event. Um, there's three and a half CPD hours attached to this conference. Uh, we'll be sending you uh, an evaluation form, a conference evaluation form in the next few days. Uh, Please do take the time to fill it in if you can. Your feedback helps us plan future events. Uh, and we'll include a link to all the presentations today at the end of this forum. We'd also like to thank our trade exhibitors. Uh, their sponsorship means that we can continue to offer you a, f a, free, a free of charge CPD event. We all love CPD. We can see by the attendance today. Um, we have 11 trade exhibitors this year, and as usual, between the presentations, they will each be coming up and giving us uh, a two and a half minute elevator pitch. Um, and we'll encourage you to as well to visit their stands, <coughs> excuse me, uh, when we break for brunch at about 10 to 11 this morning. Um, so since uh, while you connect to the Wi-Fi, while you log into Slido, uh, I thought I'd give you uh, a short roundup of seven stories uh, in the world of technology that I found interesting or unusual this year. So uh, many of you, uh, you may be wearing or you're probably familiar with uh, Fitbits. Well, uh, Strava is uh, an app, an, an application that sort of connects with your Fitbit or connects with your smartphone. Very popular in the fitness community. Um, and uh, towards the end of 2017, they released a heat map of where all of their 27 million users had, had run, had exercised in the year. Um, now, there is quite an overlap between the fitness community and people in the military. So it turned out that Strava had unwittingly, uh, uh, this was realized in January, had unwittingly realized, uh, given away the location of many, many secret military bases around the world. This is uh, a US military base in Germany. Google Maps had very nicely uh, redacted the, or blurred out the structure of the base. Strava had unwittingly, when you overlaid the maps, revealed exactly what this base looked like. Uh, this is, uh, you know, this is a problem the military have been dealing with for a hundred years. Data leaks are not a new problem for them. Um, not every country has this problem. This is the Strava data overlaid on a map of Korea. See if you can spot the border between north and south uh, here. Uh, Strava have now redacted all of this uh, information uh, and the Pentagon has banned people, uh, its staff, from uh, enabling location services. Um, on May the 10th, Apple dropped plans for a $1 billion data center. They were going to build an app in Rye. It was announced three years previously, but it was mired in legal action. Here's an artist's impression of what will now be built in Denmark uh, instead. Um, there's still a lot of ongoing debate as to whether data centers are something that Ireland uh, should be trying to attract. They use a lot of power. This uh, particular uh, data center would have added 6% to Ireland's national power requirements. Um, in 2020, we're going to have to pay fines if we don't generate at least 40% of our power from 
renewable sources. Uh, they also, once they're built and once they're up and running, they, they actually need, they don't provide a lot of direct employment. They don't need a lot of people to run them. So still an ongoing debate as to whether this is business that we want to be attracting. Uh, what was a setback for Ireland was not uh, a setback for Apple. On August the 2nd, they became the first $1 trillion listed company uh, in, in the world. Valuation didn't last for long. Uh, the Q4 trend there was seen in a lot of tech companies. Uh, when you get your pension statement uh, in the next few weeks, I'd encourage you, just leave it, leave it on the desk. Don't take any rash decisions. Uh, the 30th of May, that was the 40th anniversary of the first spam email ever sent. Uh, this happy looking guy here, he's called Gary Thurk, and on the uh, 30th of May, 1978, he sent an email to 393 people on the ARPANET. This, is w this was the, the forerunner of the internet. Uh, it got very negative reactions, uh, but unfortunately, it did generate a few sales. He had a, a, few, a new line of computers up for sales, so you can thank him for the fact that in the next 40 years, 60% of email traffic turned out to be spam. Speaking of spam emails, uh, you will have noticed a, a certain drop-off after Friday the 25th of May as the GDPR went live. Um, some companies have decided that the GDPR is so onerous uh, that they're going to avoid com uh, complying with it. If you go to try to visit the Chicago Tribune from a, an Irish or an EU site, this is the message that you see, similar to the New York Daily News. Um, some companies have decided to, to block all EU traffic. To, uh, they think that this avoids complying with GDPR. Of course, the GDPR refers to EU subjects, not to EU data traffic. So it still remains to be seen as to whether this actually counts as compliance or what the consequences will be if it, if it doesn't. Uh, June the 27th, uh, Ticketmaster <coughs> excuse me, finally admit that their systems have been breached. They lost uh, login details, personal details, uh, and payment details for tens of thousands of customers. Uh, and it turned out to be a chatbot uh, that they integrated onto their uh, payment page. They were actually told of this uh, two months prior to this by Monzo Bank. Monzo had noticed that uh, you know, they had very few of their customers use Ticketmaster, but of those that did, uh, a lot of them were uh, in, in encountering fraud. Ticketmaster actually ignored this for two months. But they weren't the only ones with uh, data breaches. Uh, FedEx, uh, 119,000 uh, customers. Uh, British Airways, 380,000 customers. Eventbrite, 26 million customers. Facebook, 87 million. Uh, Under Armour, 150 million customers. This is uh, still a problem that is affecting companies everywhere. Uh, this is one of my favorite stories from the year. This is from the 15th of November. Sometimes the story is entirely captured within the headline. Uh, last off, if you had visited the Lewis on the third, January the 3rd of this year, this is the message you would have seen if you'd visited lewis.ie. The website was hacked and a uh, threat was made to release user data um, if a ransom of one Bitcoin wasn't paid. Now, many of you uh, many may know Bitcoin is anonymous. Although it is anonymous, anonymous we can't tell who owns that address at the bottom. Uh, but it is public. All transactions on the network are public. That's part of how... Uh, transactions are verified, so we can fire up uh, blockchain.com, we can have a, a look at that address, and we can see that in fact someone did actually make a payment. Uh, unfortunately, they only paid him uh, 0.00026382 Bitcoin, or about one dollar. So crime turned out not to pay in this instance. Uh, Slido. So uh, let's hope you're all uh, signed in and logged into Slido. Shall we have a look at the Slido website and we'll have a look through our, our three questions. We can swap over to that. So our first question was, uh, what sector are you currently working in? So we have the options of business, practice, public sector, or other. So why don't you take a, have a go at voting on this? Uh, how do you expect technology to impact on your future career? Positively, no real impact, or negatively? Fairly one-sided there. I hope that was because of the presentation. I hope that was done. <laughs> And uh, our last question, I think, is a, a sort of a write-in question. What topics would you like to see covered in future events? So by all means, fill that in. Uh, and we will take a look at our results later. Uh, so I believe we have, first off, our, our th first sponsor elevator pitch. So we have two and a half minutes each, guy, each guys. I would like to welcome Ortis, BrightPay, and Premium Credit uh, in that order. So do we have Ortis? Yep.
Don't be shy, guys. Don't be shy. Morning, all. Um, it's great to see so many people in, in attendance, uh, same as uh, every year, so it's fantastic to see that. Uh, my name is Jason McLaughlin. I'm from Ortis Managed IT and Cloud. Um, we look after all aspects of your IT, from uh, infrastructure, comms, routers, uh, the day-to-day -day management and maintenance of local PCs or servers if they're on-site, cloud environment, and security elements that go all around that. Um, suppose, as I said, the, the three core elements is managed services. So that's looking after the day-to-day -day, uh, services uh, within your practice or your business. So if you have problems with a uh, laptop PC, you get onto our support desk and we, we, we fix that. Any issues around infrastructure in the network, we, we also will fix that and a fully dedicated support team to do that. Uh, the second element is the cloud. Now, there's lots of different flavors of the cloud, and I say talk about this every year. Um, and this year alone is, it has been great from an accountant's point of view. We've moved over just 200 accountants onto our hosted desktop platform. So that's a, a, a huge shift in accountants with uh, technology. So they're all moving towards hosted desk. You'll see a lot of uh, familiar faces around that have made that uh, move. Um, we're Azure, Microsoft Azure partners, uh, enterprise partners. We're also Microsoft Gold partners uh, in a lot of different categories as well. So. But the last element of what we do is probably the most important at the moment. Where cloud used to be a buzzword, it's now security. It's now GDPR. It's now data protection and how we do that. And our role within that has changed significantly in that we are now advisors and we will advise you pretty much what you do from, from your own client's point of view. You give them the best advice in tax or in accounts. We do that from a security point of view um, and it's massive at the moment. It's, it's everybody's talking about it. Our role has changed. We are now really, our role is to protect businesses and directors and owners so that they do not have to report themselves to the Data Protection Commissioner because they've had a breach. So we put the right systems and solutions in place. We lock every town, we encrypt everything, we use VPNs across all the networks, and a lot of techie stuff there now which I won't d d uh, dive into, but we really just lock the systems down so that you do not have to report yourself to the Data Protection Commissioner. Um, so um, I'm, I'm upstairs. Uh, all, all morning, so during the break, come over, say, say hello, um, and if at least not, put, uh, put your name forward for we're doing a draw for a tablet. Thanks for your time and attention. Thank you. Uh, Bright Pay, next. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Neve Collins. I'm from Thesaurus Software. We're the number one payroll provider in Ireland, and we have two payroll packages. One that a lot of you may be familiar with, Thesaurus Payroll Manager, and we also have our most recent payroll product, BrightPay. Our payroll packages are used to process payroll with companies, over 125,000 companies across Ireland and the UK, so we do have quite a broad reach of, of different clients. At the moment, as you know, we're in the middle of implementing Revenue's PAYE modernization. Great fun for everybody, I'm sure. And uh, we're also looking at it, we're trying to refer to it more as real-time reporting. It's a little bit less of a mouthful. So over the past year, we have been working a lot with Revenue. We've really worked closely with them and directly with them to bring you a fully PAYE modernization compliant payroll software package. So we are delighted to be able to say that we are PAYE modernization ready. We are Revenue compatible and with full API integration. So in order to help you guys with real-time reporting, our customer support hours have been extended over January and into February. We're also delighted to announce that we're giving all of our customers one free BrightPay Connect license for 2019. So what that means is it will allow you to connect to your payroll data via the cloud, so that is secure, automated, and with, with instant access all of the time. Additionally, all of our customers will benefit from free CPD PAYE modernization webinars. So they are run in conjunction with Revenue, and we've had a lot of those uh, webinars in the run-up to PAYE modernization release with really positive feedback from, from all of our clients. Our accountant licenses or bureau licenses, which would, would refer to most of you guys or be of interest to most of you guys, allow for unlimited clients. So that means unlimited employers, unlimited employees, and also free email and phone support, which is, which is unusual in the market. It is worth noting that we won the 2018 Payroll Software of the Year last year at the Accounting Excellence Awards, and our payroll products have a 99% uh, feedback or customer satisfaction rating. So if you would like to pop up to our stand, we'd welcome 
meeting with you and uh, we can happily sign you up for our next CPD webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, premium credit. Good morning, everybody. Looks like we have a great attendance in here this morning. Um, looks like more than we had last year. I've been doing this for the last three years. Um, with what's going on in the world with uh, Brexit and Donald Trump building a war, I feel uh, building a wall. I feel like I'm uh, my two-minute uh, slot pales in insignificance um, with everything that's going on in the world. But anyway, here goes. Um, the name of my company is Premium Credit. Um, and I believe um, my limited understanding of accountancy practices is that you would always advise your clients to collect the money, the debtor's money, in as quickly as possible and uh, extend your creditors listing as, um, as long as possible so that you can manage your cash flow. Um, so our product um, basically is a finance product. Um, our company is head office in uh, London. Um, we lend £2 billion uh, sterling worth of loans each year. Um, we have an office based out in Sandyford and we have 28 people employed out there. Um, we provide finance to you, your accountants, um, for your clients to pay your accountancy fees. Um, the benefit to you is it helps you manage your debtor's um, collections. So we pay you, the accountant, in 10 days and we collect the instalments from your clients over a number of instalments, maybe six instalments or ten instalments. This is a benefit to the client also because it gives him more cash flow and extends his um, finance as well. It's off balance sheet lending, so um, they can use their overdraft or they can use their other bank lending facilities for stock or replenishing, developing their own businesses. Um, we have a stand upstairs and I'd be delighted to uh, meet with you all. Um, and just on the side, um, talking about technology, we did experience um, a cyber incident um, during the year and um, we managed it quite well and thankfully we had no data breaches. Um, but it was an experience. So if you want to talk to me about premium finance or if you want to talk to me about technology, you're more than welcome to come and talk to me. Thank you. Thank you.